name is Erin Walsh, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Privacy Sandbox team here at Google. Today, I'll be talking through what's next on the Privacy Sandbox on Android. In this talk, we'll start with a brief refresher of what the Privacy Sandbox entails and when to expect new releases and features. Then we'll walk through a couple ad tech use cases and how to implement them with the Privacy Sandbox APIs. Finally, we'll review some resources to help get started with integration. The Privacy Sandbox aims to improve user privacy without putting access to free content and services at risk for the mobile ecosystem. To do this, we have Topics, Fledge, Attribution Reporting, and the SDK Runtime. The Topics API gathers on-device information to infer topics of interest to a particular user, which advertising SDKs can use to serve relevant ads. The Fledge API orchestrates ad selection workflows and shows ads based on custom audiences defined by app developers. The Attribution Reporting API supports the measurement of clicks, views, and conversions, and sends the reports to advertisers that detail the performance of an ad. The SDK runtime allows third-party ads-related SDKs to run in a dedicated runtime environment that provides safeguards around user data collection and sharing. These APIs allow you to monetize your app with relevant and high-performing ads while still protecting the privacy of your users. App developers can typically work with their advertising SDK partners to integrate the Privacy Sandbox. Since our initial announcement in February, we've been busy releasing developer previews, which allow you to integrate and test all of the APIs that I just mentioned. Right now, you can check out what's new in developer preview 6. We plan to enable testing of the Privacy Sandbox on public mobile devices in early 2023. We'll also release our first stable API release in a future SDK extension for you to integrate. After that, we will continue releasing developer previews in parallel to stable API releases to expose the latest features. To test against developer previews and stable releases, developers will need to complete an enrollment process that enables access to the Privacy Sandbox. When the first stable API is released, the Privacy Sandbox will initially be made available on a small percentage of eligible Android 13 devices. So when is the best time to start testing the Privacy Sandbox? The answer is right now. The sooner developers can start incorporating the Privacy Sandbox, the more action we can take on any feedback that you might have during your integration. We need your help to make the best product that we can. So now that we've had a recap of what the Privacy Sandbox is and where we're at in development, let's take a look at some practical examples using the Privacy Sandbox APIs. These examples demonstrate a few of the many ways you can put the Privacy Sandbox into practice. Ad tech developers want to know what users are interested in so they can serve ads that are interesting and relevant to the people seeing them. To do this, they can use the Topics API to receive a list of interests that are relevant to the user of an app. The Topics API infers these coarse grain interests on device with added noise to protect user privacy. It is encouraged to start integration with the Topics API and work with advertising partners to include topics and ad requests so they can be used for ad selection. To do this, first instantiate the Topics Manager, then instantiate the Topics Request Builder, which can be used as is or populated with options for the request. Then the Topics Manager can be used to call Get Topics and will return a callback. The Topic Objects will include a Topic ID, which corresponds to a taxonomy entry. In this case, our user is interested in cats, concerts, and winter sports. You can view the full taxonomy on our Privacy Sandbox GitHub page. Advertiser apps want to select the best possible ad to be shown in other apps on the same device. To do this, they can use the Fledge API to add a device to a custom audience based on the actions that a user takes. The custom audience carries information for candidate ads and logic to determine which ad to display. Let's say the user accesses this children's menu in a restaurant app. This action would be a good trigger to join the device to a custom audience for families with children. In addition, the restaurant app lets the ad network that manages its ads know about this custom audience. This can be accomplished with the Fledge API by creating a custom audience. This will include information such as the name of the ad network that manages your ads, where the ad network hosts your ad content, and the name of the custom audience itself, in this case, families of children. Once the custom audience has been defined, it can be used to create a custom audience request. Then the custom audience manager can be instantiated and used to make the call to join custom audience with the request that was just created. 
Now this device is part of the Families with Children audience. Now that we have a custom audience on this device, a publisher app on the same device will want to consider the ads that are associated with that custom audience when choosing an ad to display. To do this, the publisher app's Ad Network SDA can use the Fledge API to call select ads. Let's say the publisher app is a travel guide app. This travel guide app wants to display ads while the user researches attractions, landmarks, and restaurants. The travel guide's Ad Network SDK will start by building an ad selection config to set up the auction parameters. The builder can be used to set variables for ad selection. The Ad Network's SDK can use these variables to pass signals that are relevant to the advertising slot that the auction wants to fill. For example, what kind of food the user likes. After creating the builder, instantiate the ad selection manager, then use the config that was just created in the call to select ads. This will start an auction process that decides which ad will be selected to be displayed in the publisher, in this case, the travel guide app. The ads considered for this process will come from the custom audiences present on the device. In this case, the Families of Children custom audience from the restaurant advertiser app. The auction will run and a winning ad will be selected, which could be the ad from the Families of Children custom audience. Because the custom audience is not shared directly between the advertiser and publisher apps, Fledge can perform ad selection while protecting user privacy. To implement an end-to-end ad -end ad selection process, it is important that the advertiser app and publisher app work together. This implementation of the Fledge APIs has been simplified for time. We did not get into the details of what happens when an auction is run. I highly encourage you to check out our documentation for more details. After an advertisement is displayed in an app, ad tech developers will want to assess how well the ad is performing. This can be done with the Attribution Reporting API, which accomplishes ad measurement goals without the need for cross-app identifiers, which limits information ad tech companies receive about users. The Attribution Reporting API receives information about how the user is interacting from, with an advertisement from an Android app, SDK, or Chrome mobile browser. Once this information is gathered on device, the Attribution Reporting API sends reports to a designated service. This service is set up by whomever is receiving the reports. For example, a mobile measurement partner. Let's say a user views or clicks an advertisement in your app. You can record these interactions with the measurement manager's register source function. Register source calls an endpoint from the ad tech service that is enrolled with the privacy sandbox. And this endpoint can include optional identifiers to include more information about the interaction, such as the identifier of an ad campaign. After the user has seen or clicked the advertisement, let's say they were inspired to purchase the product being advertised you'll want to record this action as a conversion. You can do this by invoking Measurement Manager's register trigger function. Similar to register source, you'll pass register trigger an, an enrolled endpoint from the ad tech service and can include optional identifiers. Now that you've registered a user's interaction with the ad, you will want to receive and interpret that data. The data that gets sent to the ad tech service in the form of event level and of aggregate reports. Let's take a closer look at the information in each report. The event level report contains information about specific conversions that happen on the device. Because these reports refer to specific conversions, the information in these reports is limited to protect privacy. You'll find information such as the attribution destination, which refers to the app in which your event happened, the source event ID, which refers to the ad that led to this report, the trigger data, which is low fidelity data for conversions, the source type, which refers to whether the interaction is a click or a view, in this case, navigation refers to a view, and the randomized trigger rate, which is a parameter for adding noise to event reports. The aggregate report details how well your advertisement is doing overall. There are many ways to measure the success of an ad based on different business needs, so the aggregate report is customizable depending on what you want to measure. For example, if you want to measure how many purchases of a product were made in a certain geographic region due to an ad campaign, you can design an aggregation key to measure the amount of purchases based on those categories. The payload will return an aggregate key referring to the ad campaign, geographic region, and product, and the aggregatable value, which in this case refers to the amount of purchases made in those categories. In practice, the payload information will be encrypted in the report and bundled along with some other information about the report such as the reporting origin, which lists the URL where the report was sent. You can learn more about designing and receiving aggregatable reports on our documentation. 
Now that you've seen some examples of the ways that you could choose to implement advertiser use cases with the Privacy Sandbox, we encourage you to go try out the APIs. You can find sample apps on our GitHub page, development guides, and videos to help you get started. Please reach out if you have any feedback for us along the way. The earlier we receive feedback on the Privacy Sandbox, the better we can address it to make the best product possible. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.